Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you something called the method of undetermined coefficients. Sounds really fancy, and it, I guess it is. It's just a method of solving certain differential equations. So let's pick an easy example. We have y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equals x squared. So this is a linear differential equation. The coefficients are constant, and it is non-homogeneous. That's because um, this is not zero. So basically, if this is equal to zero, then you say it's homogeneous. Uh, it's linear because uh, it's linear in y and its derivatives. Um, you don't see like um, you know any um, y variables being multiplied by y variables. There's there's no functions of y. Like there's not like y y prime, and y and all of its derivatives are to the first power. So it's a linear differential equation. It's higher order because the order is two here. It's the order of the highest derivative. Lots of technical words. Let's just go ahead and solve this solution. So to solve a problem like this, what you first do uh, using the method of undetermined coefficients is to solve the associated homogeneous equation. So you pretend it's equal to zero and you find what's called the auxiliary or characteristic equation. It's really easy. All you do is you look at the order here of the derivative. This is two, so this is m squared plus three. This is the first order, so it's m to the first power, plus y is the zeroth derivative, so it's like m to the zero power, so it's just two. And you just solve this super easy quadratic equation. So you create this quadratic equation from your differential equation. It's called the characteristic or auxiliary equation. Then you can factor this. Uh, in this case, this is m plus two, m plus one, super easy, right? Set each piece equal to zero, so you get negative two and you get negative one. I'm going pretty quick here because the problem is gonna get uh, a little bit messier. And whenever you have distinct real roots to your quadratic equation, your answer is gonna look something like this. So y sub c is equal to c1 e to the m1x plus c2 e to the m2x. I'm calling it y sub c because it's called the complementary function. It's basically the solution to the associated homogeneous equation. So if this was a zero here, this would be the final answer to the problem. It's actually that easy. So m is negative two, m is negative one. So our complementary function is c1 e to the negative two x plus c2 e to the negative x. So I'm gonna put this in a box because it's an accomplishment. So for the method of undetermined coefficients, first thing you do again is pretend it's equal to zero and then solve it using the usual techniques. In this case, you find what's called the auxiliary or characteristic equation. Whenever you have distinct real roots, this is what you get. Okay. Now we have to find uh, the particular solution. So the final answer, by the way, is this. It's y equals yc plus yp. So it's the complementary function, which is the solution to the associated homogeneous equation, plus the particular solution, which we're going to find. So to find the particular solution, the way I do it is I do it in steps. We're going we're gonna to basically, we're, gonna, we're going to guess. So we're going to guess the form of yp. That's what we're going to do now. It's called guessing. It's not really guessing, it's like an educated guess. So I make an initial guess. Your initial guess, you ignore this. You just look here. This is a quadratic. So what is the general form of a quadratic? Well, it looks like this. yp ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the general form of a quadratic, right? Like if you looked at every possible quadratic in the world, they would all have this form. That's what I mean by general form. Okay. Now you look here and you compare each term of your complementary function to your initial guess. And you look to see if there's repetition. If there is, you have to multiply this by x because you want to create linear independence. So if you know linear algebra, uh, you know what that means, but you don't, want the, you don't want your solutions to be dependent. So these are exponentials. Uh, this is a quadratic. These are clearly linearly independent. There's no repetition, so you don't need to create any independence. All is good. So this is going to, so the modified, solution is gonna be the same. So sometimes you have to change it. Like if this was you know, e to the x, or if this was like, say this was like yp equals you know, a e to the negative x, then in this case, in this case you'd have to say, okay, I'm gonna multiply it by x. And then this would be your yp, right? Because you'd have to modify it to create independence. So if this was your initial guess, comparing it to this, you see there's repetition, so you would multiply by x. But that didn't happen here. We had a quadratic, so all was good. And that's a really tricky thing, um, very tricky. All right, so now comes the fun part. <laughs> so 
we have to find yp. So once you have your form, which I purposely picked an easy one for this example, we're basically going to take this and plug it into our original differential equation and find these constants. So I'm going to write it again here. yp is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. We have to find up to the second derivative, right? So let's start the differentiation process here. Let's zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. Well, got to make sure you can see what I write too. So yp prime. Just use the power rule here, right? A, B, C are constants. So bring down the 2. So 2ax plus b. Then you do it again. yp double prime. So it's 2a. And that's good. You don't want to go further. You don't need to, right? Because it's only the second derivative. If you did, if you had like a third derivative, then you would, you know, look at yp triple prime. Plug these into the de. So plugging it into the de, I'm going to zoom out here. Well, I can't zoom out. So let's see. I'm going to, I'm not going to write the de again down here. y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equals x squared. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug these into this, okay? So y double prime is uh, this one here, so 2a plus 3, really easy to forget the 3, 2ax plus b plus 2ax squared plus bx plus c, and that's equal to x squared. So just literally plugging it into um, our original differential equation here, okay? Now we're just going to multiply this out, 2a plus 6ax plus 3b plus 2ax squared plus 2bx plus 2c equals x squared. Yikes. A lot of people, what they'll do now is they'll group everything together. I don't like to do that. It's too much work. I like to use mental powers to do this and a technique called equating coefficients. So what you do is you start by looking at the different terms. The highest degree term here is x squared, so let's start with that one. So if we look at our x squared terms, a very powerful technique here. What are the x squared terms? What are the coefficients of the x squared terms on the left-hand side? Not an x squared term. Not an x squared term. Nope. Oh, 2a. Not an x squared term. Not an x squared term. Oh, 1. 1 is the coefficient of x squared, so 2a is equal to 1. Boom. So you can do that just by equating coefficients. It's a very powerful technique. Let's look at the x terms. What are the x terms? So we've got 6a, mm, 2b, and that's it, right? So 6a, x, and 2bx, so 6a plus 2b equals, what's the, what's the coefficient here? Well, it's 0x because it's not there, right? So it's equal to 0. And then constant terms, 2a plus 3b plus 2c equals, what's the constant term over here? Well, it's just 0 because it's not there, right? So solving this, when we divide by 2, we get a equals 1 half. Plugging in a equals 1 half here, we get 6 times 1 half plus 2b equals 0. That's going to be 3. 3 plus 2b equals 0, right? And then that means that b, well, 2b is equal to negative 3, so b is going to be negative 3 halves. And then a is 1 half, so we've got 2 times 1 half, plus 3 times negative 3 halves. That's a 0 there, I didn't write it, plus 2c equals 0. It's 1 minus 9 halves plus 2c equals 0. I'm running out of room here. Um, 1 minus 9 halves is 2 halves minus 9 halves plus 2c equals 0. That's going to be negative 7 halves. I'm going to get a new sheet of paper here because... My paper is running out. So we've got 2 halves minus 9 halves. So it's going to be negative 7 halves plus 2c equals 0. Add the 7 halves. You get 2c equals 7 halves. Multiply by 1 half. It's just easier than dividing by 2 mentally. c is 7 fourths. Now we go back to our yp. Our yp was ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the general form of a quadratic, right? So that's going to be 1 half x squared minus 3 halves x plus 7 fourths. That's our particular solution. And recall, the final answer is yc plus yp. So the final solution is yc plus yp. yc 
was our complementary function, c1 e to the negative 2x, I'll write it here, plus c sub 2 e to the negative x, plus, plus our particular solution, 1 half x squared minus 3 halves x plus 7 fourths. And this would be the solution to the differential equation, and this is like a super easy example. Um, but it still took, it's over 10 minutes, right? It's over 10 minute video, but I just wanted to show you a technique that is very, very powerful and you can use it sometimes. You can't use it always, okay? You can only use this when, um, well, it's mainly used when you have a linear differential equation with constant coefficients and the right-hand side is either gonna be like a polynomial, um, an exponential function like e to the x, e to the three x, e to the negative x, uh, or sines and cosines, or any linear combination of those. If it's something funky, like you know the secant function, the natural log function, one over x, you know if it's not those things I mentioned, you can use something called uh, variation of parameters, and that's when that would come into play. But hopefully this helps someone out there in the world who is trying to learn the basics of the method of undetermined coefficients. I just thought I would make this random video to show some people some math. I hope it's been helpful. Keep doing mathematics.